All right, gang, here we go. Let's let's go through this because we have we have spent the last few weeks trying to help you uh, trying to help you figure out how to set up experiments, how to be able to collect information and then use that to uh, to make predictions. So here we are getting ready to do your first test. Now this test is different than your typical pencil and paper. This is a doing test. So this is the, the technical name for it is a practicum. The nice name for it is a challenge. I just want those of you who worry about grades and things like that to know this. If you do what you know you're supposed to, you're going to be just fine. Trust yourself. All right, so here's, here's where this stuff is at. If you go into our experimental design unit and go into the, the unit assessment that's called the three-ish meter challenge, there's a link here to, uh, to the slides. These are the slides that I'm going to be, be going through here in a second. And also there's this experimental design grading checklist. That's a really fancy name for a rubric. It shows you how you're going to get graded. So you know exactly what to, what to expect. But let's talk about how this is, is going to work. Um, like I mentioned, this is, uh, this is a different kind of test than what you're typically used to. We are going to be, well, let, let me explain this. It's called the three-ish meter challenge. And the reason it's called the three-ish meter challenge is because you are going to use your science skills to predict how high a golf ball is going to bounce when it's dropped from a random height. And so here are the parameters. This is kind of how it's going to be set up. The way it's going to work is the drop height is going to be chosen randomly for your group. It's going to be somewhere between 2.1 and 2.6 meters tall. Like just to give you an example, all right, in eighth grade, I was 5'11 and a half. I knew that I had an excellent chance of, of being going to the NBA as a, as a power forward because I was going to keep growing. However... Genetics got in the way, and I am still 5'11 and a half. Probably 5'11 because I have really bad posture. But, all right, two, I am, I am just, I am a little bit short of, of two meters tall. So 2.1 to 2.6 is like up there. So that's where you're going to drop the ball from. <laughs> Here's the thing. You can only test between ground level and 1.5 meters off the ground. So you're going to have to collect some data and use that to extrapolate or to, to try to figure out, based on this data that I've collected between 0 meters and 1.5 meters, this is how high it's going to bounce out here somewhere between 2.1 meters and 2.6 meters. All right? Your grade is going to be based on the difference between the bounce height that you predict and the bounce height that actually happens. The closer your actual height is to the predicted height, the better your grade. And you get one shot. All right. So this is, so let me show you a little, a little video here if I can find it. This is, I did this uh, over the summer with, um, with a group over at Consumers. So here's the, here's the video. It's a whole nine seconds. Yep. So you see where they drop it from. They see the predicted. So this is, let's stop it right here. This is where they predicted that it was going to bounce to, but this is where it actually bounced to. The difference is how much I take off their grade. Wait, will you play it again? Yeah. Were you measuring by the bottom? Was I measuring? Oh, what did I do? Did I measure by the top or by the bottom? Yes. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. I would suggest measuring from the bottom. But anyways, here we go. So here it is again. Yep. You lose two points for every centimeter. A, what's that? It's 100 points. Oh, so, oh, yeah, like really, you can really fail. Is that a group 
it is a group thing. All right. There's a lot of, I don't know if people are relieved right now or if they're really worried, but you're going to be fine. All right. So here's, well, let me, let me explain this. Uh, all right. So those are the parameters. So here, before we get into this, this is some things that I want you to think about because I've been doing this for a while now and I found that they're, they're, the, the people that think this through and collect good data, they're just fine. But you have to think about what might be some, some problems that you might run into. All right. So first of all, what are the two variables that we're comparing here? Okay, so you do have actual versus predicted, but what is going to be, what's going to influence the drop height? Or sorry, the, the bounce height. You've got, ah, now you're really confused. Yeah, it's the drop height and the, and the bounce height. Think of how you're going to collect your data. All right, what are going to be the things that you do to make sure you are, are collecting good quality data? I mean, we've talked about this. We've talked about how to organize um, or how to set up our, our procedures. We've talked about knowing what the end, the the, uh, the IV, what's the IV, the independent, wow, my brain is, the independent variable. We've talked about chopping that up into equal segments. We've talked about how the more segments you can test, the more reliable your data is going to be. We've talked about doing multiple, uh, multiple trials in order to get an average, and then all that, that fun stuff. So think about how you're going to set this up so that you can make as good a prediction as possible. Think about what might be some of your sources of error. We've already talked about where we're measuring from. All right, we're measuring from the bottom of the ball. All right, where, how are you going to remember which ball is yours? For example, um, this right here, all right, this is, this is a, an egg carton that I got from my Grandpa Spencer's house. Grandpa Spencer died a few years ago. And when uh, we were cleaning out his house, we, we noticed that Grandpa had all of these egg cartons stacked floor to ceiling along the wall in his, in his workshop. And they were full of golf balls, all right? Grandpa loved to golf. He tried to teach me. I was a disappointment to him, all right? I am really bad at golfing. Ask Mr. Conrad, and he will, he will be laughing so hard he won't be able to, to tell you. Anyways, the reason I tell you this is because we're taking from some of Grandpa's, Grandpa's golf balls. So I have a Titleist here. I have a Top Flight. I have a Pinnacle. I have a, um, a Dunlap or a Dunlop. I have a, a Wilson Smart Core. Not all golf balls are the same, all right? So you're gonna need to make sure that you know which one is yours. One of the things that I've tried to do, and I hope it, it works okay, is I've gone and written the numbers on it. So you can go by, by table. So that is table number one, table number two, three, four, five, six, seven. And hopefully you'll be able to remember which is yours. Because it'd be bad if you started today with one golf ball and tomorrow you used a different one and it messed things up. And here's the last thing. Those of you who are very who get nervous about your grades, I don't want you to be nervous, all right? What I what the nice thing about this is is you should know what your grade is going to be before you actually do this. And here's why. You get one shot at doing this for the grade, but you can test this all you want. You can it, it, once you have your method for being able to take your drop height and predicting the bounce height, you can do your own, uh, your own random drop height and you can test it and you can see how close it comes. All right. If you, if you test it and you refine that, you're going to be just fine. The people I worry about are the people who have, have decided, Oh, I'm going to do this and I, I think it's, it'll be okay, but they never test it. Don't be that person. Make sure you test it. 
here's how you're going to grade. It's going to be a total, there's two parts, there's going to be a total of 100 points. The first part is the data collection, and that is worth 60 points. And you're going to need to have a title and a sketch of the, of, of the setup. You're going to need to be able to identify the independent and dependent variables. You're going to need to organize your data table. You're going to need a graph. You're going to need a lie and a best fit in the equation. You're going to need to explain how you made your prediction. You're going to need to do all of those things. In fact, if you go into Schoology and open up this experimental design grading checklist, what it does is it takes you to, hopefully it takes you to, maybe it takes you to, we're just going to wait for the internet to work. What it does is it shows you how everything is graded. It shows you all the little pieces that, that I am looking for here. Hopefully, whew, not sure why this is taking so long. Loading document, initializing. Here we go. I hope. Okay, there we go. So, for example, organization report is organized and easy to follow. Scientific question. Question tests the comparison between two variables and is clearly stated. There is a picture or annotated sketch. It goes through all the stuff that you need to have. Once again, you should know what your grade is before you actually turn it in. So that's the first part. That's the, the part that um, is going to be on or that you're going to do before you even test the, the bounce height. The second part is the ball drop prediction. This is worth 40 points. This is where you take all that information that you collected, you get a randomly assigned drop height, you use that data to make a prediction, preferably using Desmos, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, and then you drop that puppy for a grade. You get one attempt. You get all 40 points when the actual height it bounces equals the, the predicted height. Right? If you're above or below that, you lose two points for every centimeter off that you are. Okay? Here's how I would, or this is the materials that you need. You need a golf ball, preferably a golf ball that has your table number on it. You need a meter stick. Make sure you're using centimeters, not inches. And last of all, have a camera with slow motion, all right? That, if you use that, it's a lot easier to get what the actual bounce height is. But that's all, I'll let you figure out the rest. Here's how I want you to get started. I want you to work with the people that are at your table. That's your group, all right? Get your materials. We already talked about that. Make sure to read through the experimental design grading checklist that I just showed you. It's in Schoology. Make sure you know what it is you need to have on this. Talk it over with your group. Decide how you're going to conduct this experiment. Create your data table and start collecting drop height and bounce height, height uh, data that's between 0 meters and 1.5 meters. Does anyone have any questions? Yes? So eventually you're going to need to put it on a whiteboard. I would say... Because the whiteboards tend to disappear, sometimes, I'd put it on a piece of paper or in somewhere in your iPad um, before you make your whiteboard. All right. Excellent question. Any other questions? All right. We have a little bit of time left in class. Get going. <laughs>